Beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls, how are we all doing? So in my quest for real, real ghosts and fake ghosts and everything in between, there are some teams that you can't mention paranormal investigations and not mention these teams. You know, the big boys. And I've already done a video on Most Haunted who are pretty bad. And then you've got Zach Baggins and co. And... Zach Baggins are quite hard to make videos on because they are relentless with the copyright. And the other big team are Ghost Hunters, aka Taps. Now, out of all of those big, out of the big three teams, Taps for me were always more believable. I enjoyed them. I watched loads of them. I watched Taps International. It wasn't quite as good, but I enjoyed it. The reason I enjoyed them was they used to debunk a lot and they don't do it so much now with the stuff that comes out now and i think grant is back and been back and there's been separate shows and it all got messy and it all got messy pretty much as soon as grant had this hood pull and i'm gonna get to that because i'm gonna describe what i think happened as a matter of fact i'd say i know what happened and then he leaves the company to do other things i don't think he left i think he was told, you better leave before we fire you because of credibility. And the reason I want to delve back into Taps is the way Jason Hawes defended his daughter. It kind of rubbed me up the wrong way because while I agree I would stand up for my daughter, it would be, you have been caught in a lie. You have to come clean. I will have your back. And instead of that, it's like the debunkers are toxic. A lot of us debunkers learned from you. Sam and Colby wanted debunkers to look at their conjuring house week and to debunk they wanted our input just because nobody likes the input once we put it out there doesn't mean that we are now suddenly toxic we did exactly what you guys wanted and a lot of us just did what jason halls and grant used to do way back in the day the ghost hunters was described as the paranormal slash reality tv series and the original series started in October 2004. And the, the original version of this program ran, ran for 11 seasons and 230 episodes. That's incredible. They also had specials on top of that. I think there were 10 of them in total. And then in 2016, on their original channel, it just sort of went away. Um, it was revived again in 2019. And in 2019, the, the uploads were basically 11th and 12th, uh, sorry, 12th and 13th season. 2020, they went away and either got cancelled shortly after, and now they're at home on Discovery. So the program's sort of mainstays were Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson, otherwise known as the Atlantic Paranormal Society, TAPS. And they went to investigate places and homes, you know, private homes that are reportedly haunted whilst they were plumbers for a company called Roto Rooter. And there's a bit of a shift in the early days. It's like the, it started as a documentary slash soap opera. There's a lot of drama with um, cast members and I'm calling them cast members, even though it was far more realistic based in the paranormal investigations that they did it was the stuff outside of that there were people fired on screen and all the rest of it and there was a bit of drama about it and, you know people were caught running away and then there was a shift into a more documentary style um taps investigation and that's what i enjoyed more than the original sort of i think it was about 10 episodes before there was a, a noticeable shift then there was a ghost um ghost hunters academy I didn't like that. It was like WWE tough enough, but for ghost hunters, and it was a little bit too much of the reality TV that was popular at the time. But with Ghost Hunters Academy, it was actually run by Dave Tango and Steve Gonzalez. I always say his name wrong, and I do apologize. And Dave Tango and Steve Gonzalez were always the more believable of anyone on that show. And while doing research for other projects, I looked into uh, Steve Gonzalez, and there was a really interesting interview I read with him where somebody asked him, has he ever seen an apparition or a ghost? And he quite honestly replied, never. Not in the entire time I've been ghost hunting. I've seen things that I can't explain, but I have never ever seen an apparition. Um, the first bit of drama involved a guy, I think his name was Brandon. 
and there was sort of something he did an investigation i think he run and then he was just being unprofessional but it all seemed over dramatized but that's the ghost hunters that i enjoyed that was the ghost hunters that i thought were, were more legitimate and before i get into why i stopped watching them because before grant had been forced to leave or left by his own accord i'd stopped watching them because i saw what a lot of people saw and you know it was a hood pull but i want to show a little clip of why i was invested in this show for a while because they didn't behave like other ghost hunters where they was running and screaming and then you know even though it was a little bit more dramatic with the soap effect things the actual investigations they debunked a hell of a lot they put homeowners at ease and i enjoyed that and it's kind of what i do from this chair so this is the clip that i want to show you of why i love this channel and probably what started to turn me into a debunker they had reports of a ghost of a female laughing in a bathroom of a restaurant or a hotel i can't remember and I'd have to go back and try and find which season, which episode, which would be an absolute ball ache, and then I'd have to pull it off Amazon Prime, which doesn't allow me to screen record, so I've got to find it through other channels on YouTube, and the footage is going to be grainy and horrible. That's the only way I can do this, but I want to show in the interest of fairness why I enjoyed these guys so much in the beginning. Claims of a lady laughing. Ladies' room. Were the reports women's laughter? What? What? As soon as we opened the door, we heard a woman laughing. Who's that laughing they're talking about? This? Now, uh, the initial few seconds when they walk into that room, you hear the laughter. You're like, wow, they caught something. And then as soon as they look up, you know they, they know where it's coming from. And instead of claiming it to be a ghost, they go looking. Where's it coming from? Right there? I'm a speaker. What? Hold on, let's see if we can lift this crap up. Yep. Let's see what's up there. It's a speaker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I see the sensor right here. Debunking as they go. This, and they did this quite a lot. I remember an episode, and I can't find it, where there's a bar where the lights are shaking. And they go up into the ceiling above it and they find mechanisms attached to the top of the light fittings from the inside of the, the ceiling or it'd be the floor above it into the ceiling below that was designed to make these things move and these people were stupid enough to call this team in whilst claiming they were being haunted and obviously it bit these people on the ass because these guys would present their evidence at the end and be like you faked it and I had respect for that because that's got to be awkward to do that has to be to sit in front of someone and say we know you're lying face to face i'll take some balls i could do it i'd actually love to do it but then clearly tv networks start putting their oar in like we need to make this more exciting we need to make this more commercially viable and all the rest of it and then we get to this ridiculous coat pull now, there are three instances of this coat pull in that episode that I remember. I think it may even have been four. And I think that Jason clocked what was going on. I don't think he was in on it. I, I think Grant just took it to himself to make the show more interesting in this episode. And Jason clearly rumbled him on the fourth one because in the re-upload to Amazon Prime, this part of the episode is missing the fourth pull. There's only three pulls on there. And I distinctly remember the fourth pull because Jason was looking at the hood and his face said everything. And I'm probably going to look for that after I've recorded my initial reaction to this hood pull. See if I can find if somebody else has managed to debunk it or find something. So we'll screen share again. And let's have a look at this hood pull. Now, initially, it looks quite impressive. You know, he's walking and there's this movement and he gets jerked back. But when you watch the episode, and you can watch it in its entirety, apart from the fourth hood pull, this arm is always in his pocket when that pull in motion happens. And when you see the back of his hood, it doesn't pull out from him to give him that jerking movement like he's been pulled back. The hood pulls down. 
how has this happened? Because Jason checks his hood and there's nothing that he can see. Well, if you cut a hole in the lining of your jacket from the inside, run a wire and stitch a wire to the inside of that hood. You can give it a little yank as you're walking. And that's pretty much what happens. But I don't think he's actually pulling it with his with his hand. I think he's got some sort of retractable keychain. I used to have them for work because I did security. I had loads of bunches of keys and you'd put them on your belt on these little fast, uh, these little metal belt loops, extend them out with, so you didn't drop keys, etc. If you dropped them, it'd swing and then retract back in. And I think he's got one of these and he's just pressing a button in his pocket. And he seems to be very aware of where Jason is stood and he tries to keep out of his sight apart from one area and we'll see if we can find that see if somebody else has debunked it and of course i'll give the that person the credit okay. now it pulls if the hood is there it pulls inwards and down it doesn't pull out so why is he jerked backwards like something has yanked him back? The hood pulls down, he throws himself back. It doesn't... It looks odd. So go into slow motion. The hood pulls down. Ugh. So his body language or his movements that the hand in his pocket is all offsets alarm bells ringing okay so the video that i showed you earlier on today was ghost hunters live 08 grant go grant's goat <laughs> grant's coat gets pulled close analysis vv asap is the channel and his whole that his video is about how real this is so with some searching, I have found um, former GH fan. He's only got 156 subscribers. This video is from 2008. Now, I haven't seen this, so we'll get to watch it at the same time. Let's see what this guy is. Hopefully, he debunks exactly what I have described on that one scene. This video is only a minute and 45 seconds long, so don't hold up much hope for it. I guess it's got something to do with copyright. Let's check this out. Ghost Hunters Live Coat Tug Collar Debunk. That's what we were looking for. Right, the purpose of this video is to illustrate three points. Grant's collar was pulled down and not back as was stated. That's exactly what we've said. Causing the collar fabric to bulge outward. Grant's jacket does not move with the exception of his collar fabric. Finally, the Grant could not have been pulled back as an unseen force by an unseen force as was stated. We will illustrate this by removing the forward tilt of Grant's body, allowing us to see exactly what that collar is doing. See, it's the top of the, the hood pulling down, which bulges the back. Cool. Now look at his right arm. There is a movement to him pulling down. His body language is all wrong. Now, whoever's edited this have changed the camera. They've tracked the camera to stop the backward jerk happening. There's the top pulling down, this part bulging out. Spot on. But his arm, look where his arm is in his pocket. There's something off. Even the way he's looking, he's kind of... It's all. It was all off. It was all off back then. 25% speed. There's the pull with the left arm. There's the hood pulling in and the pop bottom bulging out. He leaves go, turns around. I just got my coat pulled. Okay, so this channel is called Episode CJS2. Or is that LL? Well, investigating in Fort Delaware. And this video is 15 years old. Why am I covering something that's 15 years old? Because these were the guys I believe. No, oh, he's got multiple camera angles on this. Let's have a look. If you want us to leave, you gotta let us know. You gotta do something. Come on. You gotta do anything. Left hand something. in the pocket. 
Left hand going deeper into the pocket. Oh! Something just pulled on my coat. Where? Just on my... My collar. And now he, you Look know, at him he fiddling. He's, he's fiddling with his left hand there. Pulling out of his pocket and whatever he used to retract that hood. So, so they don't want you to go? Maybe I'm going the wrong way. And the impression I'm getting from Jason's body language is like fuck. I'm trying to go back here, aren't we? Um, you want to go deeper into? Should we go deeper into the tunnels? I kind of feel like they're trying to like drag us out that Stop. way. Which way? They go away. We should go back this way. They right? go away, Valentine. Let's do it. Right? Yeah. We should. Right, I'm going to mute this and then slow this one down because I haven't seen this angle for years. There's his hand going into his pocket. There's a button clicked and look at that depression there. And he does the... Uh, it's the exact same motion on that hood. Let's watch this again. Watch his right hand into the pocket. It goes, pull. And then he just bounces backwards like something has pulled him, even though that's clearly pulled his hood down from the top. It happened again? It just did it again. Did you even hear my coat? It just whoosh, pulled me back. I would say I got snagged on something, but there's nothing here to get snagged on. So, <laughs> Jason's language there is really... Really? He looks pissed. So we don't want us to go that way and you don't want us to go that way. So maybe we're supposed to just stay here for a second. Like five mm -hmm. down, five of those lights down. The fifth one yes. keeps on getting blocked down. Jason's entire demeanor at this point is just pissed. And he's looking almost guilty. Like, fuck, has he noticed? And then he does it again. I'm gonna put the thermal on your back and see if it picks anything up. Yeah, just like something just grabbed my collar and just pulled right me there. back like that. And I could feel my whole coat move. Okay, that's some scary stuff. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go. Oh, found out what's blocking out the light down here. And there was his hand in his pocket again. What is doing this? That's a big bat. And that movement there, it's like he's resetting something. Dude, it just did it again. It just did it again. I had the head on the back of his neck the whole time. Is there... Here. I don't know if I don't know what could I could be caught on. So Jason at this point, thank you for the subscription, Andy Bird. Jason at this point is having a good look. He's got obviously the thermal imaging camera inside the hood, so he can see. He probably needed a torch and a proper camera, or a torch on his eyes, to be fair. But obviously he's trying to prove to us, and um, which is why I I don't think he knew what was going on, but he was suspicious. His, his body language is just off. As in, hmm, he looks quite pissed off. It's a little too intimate for me here. Yeah, same here. Awkward moment. Well, there's, there's nothing. Nothing fell there's in there? Literally nothing. No, it's, it feels like someone's grabbing my collar and not yanking, but just well, I heard staying, they, staying there. They were able to catch it on the thermal, so I heard that, so... Well, I have to look at it. Well, that's pretty sweet. Okay. I have no idea. There's nothing there. So. Alright. There you go. Okay. Jason's checked the hood, but if that retractable wire is just fished up through his coat and sewn into um, the sort of the, the ridge of the end of the hood, 
Jason's not going to feel that, which is what makes me... He was looking hard because he clearly didn't believe it, but he couldn't find anything. They're in the dark. He used a thermal image at the look for some reason instead of his eyes. But I don't believe he was in on this, and his body language says he was quite pissed. Okay. So something... There's that fifth white down there. There's this big bat just <laughs> swooping right by. So that's what's doing the window. That's not what's getting me. I don't know. It you seems want... like I'm saying, look, should we be here? And it's telling me, no, you shouldn't be here. Or it's and I try to go to and here. it's yanking me. Let's have a look at this guy. Um, Oz Ozinx. O-Z-I-N-X. 200,000 views. Shit. Right, let's have a look what this guy is pointing out. His hand is in his pocket. Yep. Now watch the motion of his shoulders in the back whenever this so-called tug happens. Something. He jerks oh. his whole shoulder and his right side goes back. Not his whole body. In slow-mo, slow motion. Does he pick up the top of the hood being pulled? It and kind of goes down. It doesn't go back. It goes down into the coat. Pushes the bottom out. Yeah. And he rolls his arm back. He keeps his hand in his pocket the whole time. Doesn't take it out. And right through his hand here, he's got a recorder. He still keeps his hand in his pocket, but he starts to fidget with it. He's right resetting here, he's something. Kind of straightening something out. Watch. Right through there. Tucking. That's him stretching the cable back out. He uses his hand that's full with a quarter to pull up his collar, keeping his hand in his pocket, which he's still fidgeting. Okay. Right there, of course, his hand. See the little dip right there? That's where I believe there's a cord running down his back, possibly through his belt loop or underneath his belt. And the little, the little, uh, controller's right by his pocket. It's like a loop or something he pulls on because he has to put, reset the trick by using his hand to pull up the collar. Now, slow motion, you see... Uh, slow motion. You're going to see that it goes... Yeah. Let's get rid of the sound here. Thank you. That it goes down, not back. The only thing going back is he's rolling his, leaning his body back. And it seems to me that it's also, every time he does the tug, it's on his right foot, because that's where he's tugging it from, in his right hand. Right there, tug. Now there it's you just, go. It's... There you go. That dip there shows that it's being pulled from the inside. It's not this part of the coat being pulled back. It goes down into the jacket. He starts going down like somebody's pushing down on him. It's not being pulled back. It's going straight down. And of course, it happened again. Now let's use the hand. Pull it back up. Reset it. And his right hand's still in his pocket. Something's pulling me back. Blah, blah, blah. Look how rigid right, his right arm is. This way. Alright, now if you watch the thermal, again, it looks like it's going down, not back. It's not a very good see, uh, view of this because it is in such a smaller uh, box now. Ooh, fuck. It goes down. See it? How it goes down. And it's he pulling rolls, into course, his back coat. Again, his shoulders. Did it again. Okay. Okay, he's pulled it up. He's about to pat him twice on the back. Right in this area here, again, where you saw the dip earlier that goes straight down. This is the fourth time that it happens, but they don't say anything about it on the show. He doesn't mention it. Grant doesn't say anything about it. He quite possibly may have seen it out of the corner of his eye. Maybe not. It's dark. But when the show re-aired, when this happens... He's looked at the... Right, I looked at a more recent upload of this. And uh, I knew there was... I knew there were four Coke balls. This guy remembers four coat balls, and in the re-upload, the fourth one was missing. And I think this the f Jason seems suspicious the entire time, but this fourth one, I think that's when he knew exactly what Grant was doing. And then obviously a short time later, Grant leaves. Leaves. They don't have this large scene again. They cut back to the two shots of the thermal camera, and this whole scene minimized, so you can't really see it happen again. 
Now, here we go. Just keep an eye. It's going to be in this area because it moves across. Watch it go straight down. You'll see the little little uh, pocket that kind of pops out in the way. Bang. Down it went. See, now that was straight up here. There's a little pocket I'm talking about. We'll back it up once. Eight seconds back. And I'll slow mo it. Okay. Pat. Pat. Well, come on, bang. And then down we go. Nice big little, just, just like the little trigger that goes right down his back. He has reactivated it. Way to go. Now, I believe this is where it happens right here. You Watch have to do this. something to hold our attention. Take the camera and tuck something underneath my and put it back in my right hand. Okay, that right there tells me that he's trying to hide something. And uh, yep. that's pretty much uh, the evidence I'm, I'm sending to you. I can't believe this was that long ago. 15 years. 14 years ago, this guy, Ozinx, debunked him. 67 subscribers, be it 200,000 views on this video, which is incredible. Well, there's somebody here called Artemi Artemis X. I used to work... Let me see. I was just about to start wrapping up this video, and then I just spotted this comment. Artemis X. I used to work for them. They got a host in, in Ohio to say they'd had paranormal experiences, when I know the man didn't and did not believe in ghosts. They wanted me to say I'd had an experience in a TAPS magazine office when I hadn't. In this field, you have to have 100% integrity or you have none. So look at this guy. Sorry, lady. Apologies. Is there anything on her channel that links her or proves that she was part of TAPS? This is a music channel. There's nothing there... I don't recognize her from any of the TAPS episodes that I've seen. But there we go. So we have to take that with a grain of salt. Without remembering her from an episode, we can't prove that she worked there. That's not obviously not her real name. So have a look at her links. Instagram, Spotify, SoundCloud. This is a musician. The reason I wanted to do this was that hood pull is the reason that I stopped watching TAPS. Now, as I said, Tango and... Gonzalez, they seem like decent guys. I like them. I kind of like the guys that did the international, but the hood pull just sort of ruined it for me. But it, in the same vein of Carl Beatty being pulled up the stairs in 30 East Drive, it was so obviously fake that that's when I checked out. And I managed to watch Ghost Adventures for longer than any of them because it was so ridiculous and so bad that it was good. And I think they know what they're doing. I mean, Zach's got to a point now where. His ego is so inflated, he thinks people believe him. But there was always that tongue-in-cheek aspect of them that I enjoyed. Whereas the TAPS team, they took everything seriously, scientifically. They debunked as they went, and then it got a little bit too blown out. And now that Jason has you know, come out and basically said, you know, I've, I'm Jason Hawes. I work for TAPS. I am legitimate. I've always been legitimate, and I wouldn't stand for fakery. Well, maybe, because Grant left the show. And I think it's left the show after that hood pull. Was it all linked? Was he pushed out or told, you know, you need to leave because we all saw what you did? Possibly. But if Jason had any integrity, surely he would have addressed that that hood pull was fake. I, I, I don't think he did. And, you know, I've had a look online. There's nothing I can find with Jason has outwardly said what I call Grant Faking. Maybe it was some sort of allegiance because of friendship, but if I was working with someone and my entire business and my integrity was at risk because of a stunt, I'd call them out. I'd have to. So, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. I know this is old, but I may have an audience that are not aware of this. Or well, there may be some people that remember watching this way back in the day and then never knew anything else about it afterwards. So it's good to remind ourselves that even the guys that we considered to be the best were not infallible to fakery and somebody in the team deceiving. And I thought it was definitely worth a look. I hope you enjoyed this video. Much love. Beardo. Out.